I'm come in and attach the thread just behind the eye of the hook. Lay down a little bit of thread behind the eye there. For the eyes on this particular pattern, uh, I'm using medium size plastic bead chain. And very simply, I'll cant this toward you so you can kind of see what's going on. I'm going to leave uh, just a little bit of a gap there but behind the hook eye, maybe about an eighth of an inch. I do want them fairly close. And I'm just going to go back and forth, crisscross some wraps here. So I'm laying these down in a nice X pattern. Take about four or five this way, come underneath, take another four or five this way. Until they're firmly locked down. And these are connected with a thread if you've never worked with them before. So they are going to have a little bit of wiggle in them, and that's okay. Before I move on with the rest of the pattern, though, I'm going to take just a little bit of zappy gap. And I'm going to put that right there in the middle. And I'm going to also touch it on the underside. After I have those eyes in position and secured where I want, I'm going to take this thread back to the bend of the hook. And I'm going to bring in a pine squirrel strip. So this is a Sculpin Olive in color. I typically tie this pattern in a brown or in the Sculpin Olive. Um, but it really should be based off of the dragonfly nymphs that you have in the still waters that you fish. I've taken the tip here and I've cut this at a 45 degree angle. It's going to run away from me. And the reason why, so when I bring this up here, when I catch this, I'm going to catch it just by the tip of that skin. And when I bring that over for the first wrap, it's going to make sure that that skin's out of my way and it's not going to lump up on me. So I'm going to take that thread, I'm going to wrap it forward and leave it about an eighth of an inch behind the eyes on that. And then because I'm a little bit of a durability freak, I'm going to take a little bit of zappa gap just a touch. I'm just going to coat the hook shank there where I'm going to wrap this down. Now when I start to wrap this forward, I'm just going to lay down nice side-by-side -side wraps. I always kind of moisten my index finger and my thumb as I do this and the reason why is I usually take it and just kind of brush back each wrap keeps that fur out of the way especially since I have zappa gap on the hook shank stuff will tend to kind of stick to it if I let it get out in front of me so nice side by side wraps keep that index finger and thumb moist so you can brush that back and keep it out of the way and I'm just going to take this right up to where the thread's at I'll take one more wrap Get it pretty nice and tight in behind the eyes. Once again, one last brush back of the fur. And I'm just going to take this thread. And I'll wiggle it right through the fur there. Make sure it's nice and snug. Take three or four wraps in front of it. Come in with the tips of my scissors. I'm just going to snip that fur strip off. And you can see this little tag end right here. I'm going to very simply brush the fur back with my fingers. And I'm going to catch that tag with my thread. Just kind of squish it down and make sure that it's locked down and secured. So at this point I'm going to bring in two strands of Olive Sexy Floss. And I really, really like this stuff for underwater patterns. It has a really nice flattened uh, appearance and profile to it. So usually when I work with this and I tie in legs, I'm going to take these two strands and I'm going to just kind of lay them overneath, over the thread, excuse me. And this allows me to just kind of slide them back and forth. I can touch them where I want them to be. And in this pattern, I'm actually going to touch them more toward the top of the hook shank. Take one turn in front of them and just kind of let them loose. So I can pull these down on one side. I want two on each side. Take about two or three wraps. And then very simply grab those other two. Bring them around the far side. And catch them with a few more wraps. This stuff's squishy. I'm going to lay down probably a half a dozen wraps. Just to really kind of trap it and secure it. And then when I go to trim these legs, I want them just shy of the back end of the length of the body. So I'm going to snip those there. Snip those there. For the head on this pattern, uh, I'm very simply going to use some of the same pine squirrel fur off of another strip. I'm going to add a little bit of this loon swax to the thread, which I love working with. Makes the dubbing process really easy. I've already pulled this fur off of the thread and I've just mixed it with my fingers and do a nice mixed dubbing and I'm going to create just a basic dubbing rope. Once I have that rope created, before I lay this down, I'm going to take just a little bit of zappy gap, touch on the back side of the head, right in between the eyes. And as I bring this up and around, I'm going to build up, I guess, what you'd call the neck first. So I'm going to get this covered with 
just some nice side-by-side -side wraps. Once I get to the eyes, I'll turn this so you can see it, I'm going to start making crisscross wraps in between the eyes just to kind of build that up and to fill that in a little bit. So I have enough now. I still have about an inch and a half on that dubbing rope. I'm going to take one pass back over the neck, build that up just a little bit, come right back up behind the eyes, and then finish this right behind the eye of the hook. So as long as I look at this on the top and I have a little bit of a head built up, I have that covered. It's covered nicely on the bottom side. And I'm just very simply going to get a few wraps in there, come in and whip finish it by hand. Snip that thread. A little touch of zapper gap on those thread wraps. And there's your finished squirrely dragon.